everyone. Thank you all for taking the time out of your day to attend our webinar today featuring web expenses. My name is Ryan Harris. Many of you all know me as your account manager here at Nobly. So joining me for today's webinar is Ollie Pollard, who's a partner manager at Web Expenses, Tom Price, who's a solutions consultant at Web Expenses, who we're taking you through today's demonstration, and finally Chris Evans, an implementation consultant who will be handling technical questions during the Q&A later in the session. So as discussed around the Q&A, if you have any questions during the webinar, please use the chat option provided. We'll answer all of your questions later on. So I'll now hand you over to Ollie, who will take you through the presentation. Awesome. Thanks very much, Ryan. I appreciate that. Yeah, just, just to give you guys a bit of a, a look at the agenda for today's session. Um, so we'll start off with a, just a very high level overview of web expenses, you know, the typical types of problems we aim to, to solve. Give a bit of background on our kind of current client base. Um, then I'll hand over to Tom for a, a bit of an overview of some of the key system features. Back to myself, have a little bit of a look at the, the direct two-way integration into NetSuite. Uh, then we'll kind of give you a bit of an overview of kind of the implementation process and the, the support offering uh, for all of our customers. And then we'll finish with a, um, a quick demonstration by Tom. And as Ryan said, um, take any questions um, at the end. So we skip on to the next slide. As you probably would have guessed, Web Expense is a cloud-based expense management system really with a core value of increasing business efficiencies. Um, most specifically, we look to automate the full expense process, so removing all paper and manual steps. As you can see um, from looking at the slide here, we've got um, a good number of years in the industry, 20 years, um, and that's lent us to, to develop easy to use systems that are highly configurable. We've actually probably grown to become one of the, the key UK market leaders within the expense management space with 2,000 clients globally um, serving 70 countries um, and that's across our three offices so myself Tom and Chris are based in our headquarters uh, which is in the Whitney office just outside of Oxford in the UK and then we have our two regional offices one in North America and the other in Australia. Web expenses it, it's all about um, our core is always around three types of users. So aiming to serve claimants, approvers, and the accounts team. So with the claimants, it's making the submissions process as easy as possible. You know, making it transactional as possible, they can get the claims across uh, and make sure they are reimbursed as quickly as possible. For approvers, it's the same, making it as easy as possible for them to approve the, the guys in their team, being able to take a quick glance to see whether something's has a receipt attached, um, you know, it's within policy and then passed to the accounts team. The accounts, it's all about boosting their visibility of the, the travel and expense spend, using the system to enforce that company policy, and then finally being able to maximise the VAT reclaim potential. As you can see from the slide, uh, if you want to go back one, Tom, looking at the, the problems we help solve, we normally break that down into to four key areas. The first one being time consuming expense process. So you know, a manual paper bent expense process, it wastes time, reduces productivity, and ultimately you know, causes frustration for anyone that's involved in that process. Quite regularly, we'll see Excel spreadsheets being filled out, paper receipts um, you know, being stored in people's cars or on people's desks, uh, and then you know, paper envelopes handed to approvers. What our system does is it automates all of the steps along the way. So starting with the mobile app, you can take a picture of the seat. The OCR will look to pull off the date, the amount, the description, as the system is starting to build that claim for them. The approver is then notified when they've got a claim to approve. They can log into the mobile app or desktop, quickly view as to whether that claim is in policy, whether a seat is attached, and then approve or deny that, whether that's expense header or line item level. The second one is, it's really around being how difficult it is to enforce travel and expense policy, when ultimately there's no easy way to actually notify employees of the exact policy um, or actually prevent them um, submitting claims that are out of policy. Subsequently, when it comes to the claimants and approvers, 
actually adhering to travel expense policies and near on impossible when they are actually unaware of these policies in place. What web expenses does is finance teams get that control back. That travel and expense spend is then enforced through the company policy within the system. So soft or hard rules can be configured, which means that users are even notified when their claim is out of policy or they physically cannot submit until they're within policy or, for example, where a seat is attached. Third one being financial data being insecure. So I've touched upon it previously with, with receipts being you know, stored on uh, people's desks or on people's cars. Having sensitive information being lost, duplicated or, or wrong is quite common with paper processes or even multiple systems are being kept to to manage that expense process. What our central and secure cloud-based solution does is it allows for all receipts to be stored in the system so claimants can take a picture of their receipts, store it in the repository and choose when they want to push it into a claim. Admins can keep and hold claims uh, and for audit purposes be able to exactly see the receipts that are attached to that claim. Um, it's also very useful. And then finally, unable to maximise VAT reclaim. Uh, this has become even more prevalent over the last 18 months. You know, we see finance teams really difficult being able to check for relevant back receipts and making the calculation themselves when they're using a manual expense process. What Web Expenses does is it ensures all back receipts are attached and actually making that calculation is a lot easier um, when we're able to, to look at the category of spend. We want to skip on to the next slide then, Tom. Just to give you a bit of an idea of some of our customer base then, um, I've, we've provided a couple of the logo brands on the slide here. Our typical customer does very much vary in size and industry. You'll see some of the, the, the big logos on the slide, your JCBs and your Ryanairs of this world will be you know, submitting thousands of claims a month. But the solution can also be scaled down to customers who are, you know, submitting as little as five to ten claims a month. Industry-wise, I guess due to the broad nature of expenses, we do sit across many different industries. But notably, I'd say we're probably most competitive when it comes to finance, manufacturing, and retail. And ultimately, organisations with sales teams or engineers that are out on the go. Um, traveling for work and they need that easy way for their employees to submit their expenses on the go. I'll hand you over now to, to Tom to give you a bit of an overview of some of the key system features. Thanks, Ollie. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of these in a, in a great amount of detail. Um, it's really just to give you an idea of some of the key features uh, that we'll also be going through on the demonstration that allow you to see not only a great return on investment um, when improving your processes with expenses, but also just making people's lives significantly easier. So there's there's a number of areas where we would see everybody that takes the system would get a really significant improvement. Um, and that tends to be more on the day-to-day -day processes. So the, the key piece would be the, the sort of optical character recognition, so the OCR in the system, making it so that people that are claiming on the go, whether it's out of pocket or um, corporate cards, they just snap a picture of the receipt. They don't have to carry that paper receipt out anymore. Um, and it just means that when that comes in through to accounts, you've got nice clean detail against receipts um, and, and thoroughly well organized as well. The other part is both a globalized and a centralized system. So regardless of whether you, you're sort of one office with a, a small amount of staff or whether you're a global business, um, everything within the system can be customized to each region, but it also makes sure that everybody's on the same page um, across the expenses process and in terms of auditing and reviewing, um, it, it really gives you that control and that visibility over the process. There's a couple of other pieces in here then that it will change depending on the nature of the business, the types of expenses that you incur and your, your sort of current level um, uh, of process. So a really useful one would be mileage. So both checking the miles that people are doing, making it easier for people to build and submit mileage claims, but also as a business, making sure you're reclaiming everything you need with VAT, you've got all the relevant receipts, um, and your process is managed really well. And we'll quite often see when clients move to our solution for, 
for mileage claims. Um, if they're not currently claiming the VAT, it very often pays for the system in itself with the amount of money that they're, they're actually losing. Um, the other area is, is probably policy reinforcement. Nolly touched on it as well, but again, it's just giving you that control over the spend. Um, and by having prompts for people as they go through the system, whether that's making sure they've got a receipt, making sure that they're within a, a, the right amount, they haven't changed a number of miles, just highlighting those areas to people as they're building claims tends to mean that people are a lot more compliant and there's a lot more, uh, sorry, there's a lot less issues than when it comes through to accounts, less things being rejected uh, and an overall quicker, smoother process for, for everyone. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, when we're looking at the um, not only the integration, but also the partnership, um, we've worked with NetSuite for, for over 18 months now. So we sit on the, the Suite Developer Network. We've become built for NetSuite and Suite Success Ready. Uh, and really, that's really led us to, to have a number of customers now to reference from across all three regions. And, and what we've seen is, is as more and more customers look to move from on-premise to the, to the cloud, ultimately web expenses and, and the next suite offering really strengthens when it comes to the integration uh, we have a complete live data feed so our two-way integration is always synchronized and this allows clients to pull and also update the next week data into the web expenses system this has three main benefits first one being completely matched data sets within both systems second one being ease of setup and extremely quick implementations times. Um, I'm sure if we if we need to, we can go into more detail at the end uh, for any particular questions we may have for Chris on that. Um, but essentially that direct integration um, and that two way has allowed the implementation and an actual setup of the connection to be very quick. And the last one being that one primary source of data. So removing the, the multiple entries of data, rekeying of data between the two systems. The direct integration also enables some really key areas. So the first one, probably the most obvious, is the automated passing of expense data. So this is both out of pocket and corporate card spend. The second one being user provisioning for the ability to provision and update employees from NetSuite into web expenses. Approval routings can also be used from NetSuite. Um, and also a cl the claimant's cost center and approver to be provisioned direct from NetSuite. Third piece, auto-synchronization of tax, customers, vendors, any of the, you know, the key classifications can be pulled into the system and updated. And then the last two being the management of project costs and ultimately a full audit trail. So really the integration is here to prevent that reeking of data and automating the full expense process. Just to give you a bit of an overview of the implementation, um, this process, um, th there's a number of steps in it, but really the time it takes, we, we tend to reflect the needs um, uh, of the, the project and the client as we move through. So the, the key areas that we focus on are having an initial initial consultancy. So we really understand your processes, what you're looking to get out of the solution um, and the, the key areas and features that will work for you. Um, we build the system. We let you have then a period where we'll walk you through it, we'll um, provide full training, let you test the solution and make sure it not only meets your requirements, but it's working smoothly um, for everyone across the business. And only when everybody's happy that the system's working as intended, we then go live across the business. Um, now, there's a few steps in there, but that process tends to take anywhere from two to four weeks from the, yes, we want to go ahead to been live with it, um, across the business and again it's very reflective of the, the time that you've got available and your time scales um, but it's a relatively light touch implementation from your side um, it's more just giving us an understanding of, of what you need and your, your sort of GL structure and users um, and then a lot of the heavy lifting is done by ourselves to enable you to have a, a highly configured system but one that's delivered in, in a really quick space of time. So we've looked at um, a couple of the solutions that we helped solve, but just to give um, you a bit of an idea of the, the key customer benefits of using web expenses as a, as a NetSuite user, we've broken this down into to four key elements alongside the direct integration. First one being proven platform. So as I mentioned in the introduction slide, 
we've grown to become one of the key market leaders in expense management in the UK uh, and hit obviously a number of milestones such as you know one billion's worth of, of expense claims going through the system and, and 2,000 clients. The second one being custom and scalable system. So though our focus is ultimately ease of use uh, and a user-friendly system for payments approvers and, and ultimately the accounts and the admin team, the system is also very highly configurable. Not only that's scalable, so we've we've mostly looked at web expenses as the, the key focus today, but we've also grown now to provide a, a suite of cloud-based tools in addition to expense management to help organizations automate other finance processes, such as invoice processing, managing the expense reimbursements for the customer, uh, and also travel management. Third one being agile development. So ultimately we recognize the importance to, to always re be responding to the change in the market requirements um, and ensuring that the market demands are, are ultimately being met. And finally, and I think probably the, the, the key one which stands us out to a number of other expense providers is our in-house support. So due to our presence in the UK, the US and Australia, we have uh, a consistent approach to customer support um, across all three regions. So it's a bit of a, a chase the sun scenario. So between the hours of eight to five, you speak to the UK team, followed by the US and then followed by the APAC. Um, we provide 24 hours, six days a week, and that's to all end users. So not just admins, and that's via chat, email and phone. So ultimately giving that you know peace of mind to to anyone that needs to, to speak to our team no matter where they are in the world um, our team are hand on to, to do so um, all customers also have an account manager so we treat all customers as partners um, they will complete regular review calls to, to get that customer feedback discuss with the support team and ultimately share with the, the relevant stakeholders um, to, to drive that product development piece we also have um, a support hub as well. This is almost like our proactive support area um, for, for any additional help that claimants or approvers or the admins team that we want to go to to learn more about different areas of the system. So there's tutorials, training videos, user guides, um, you know, a glance at the development updates that are coming, roadmap, etc. Uh, and ultimately, on-site training and webinars uh, are always able to be booked. Um, and any time through your account manager. Looking at, um, again, Tom kind of touched upon the, the return investment piece uh, before I go on to pricing. It's very important to mention the, the opportunity here. We have three kind of key elements to the return investments we always like to touch upon. First one being three hours saved per claim. So employees can free up the their time with the, the digital approach to expenses when they have ultimately more time to do the job that they're employed to do. The second one being 43% reduction in errors. So due to automatic controls, policy enforcement within the system means, you know, no more duplications, mileage totting up or out of policy claims. And then ultimately that 400% return on investment. So our fair pricing, the elimination of ERP rekeying, that increased visibility, um, and ultimately that automation of travel and expense means uh, our software really um, pays for itself. So how does the pricing work? Pricing is pretty simple. It works on an active user model, but it costs a flat six pounds per active user per month. So how this works is, you can load all of your employees or, or all of your users into web expenses, but you'll only pay for those that are actively submitting or approving a claim in that month. Once they're active, users can then submit an unlimited amount of claims or approve an unlimited amount of claims for no additional cost. The implementation fees very much range as well. So as Tom's touched upon, it's by no means a HR or an ERP sized project. Um, it's very low touch, two to four weeks, and the cost is roughly about 500 to, to 1,500 pounds. Right, I'll now hand you back to Tom for a, a bit of a demonstration of the system.
we go. So what I'm going to do initially is take you through um, the solution from a claimant perspective. We'll build a couple of claims so you can see how it works. Um, we'll show you the, the approval and the account side as well. Um, both the claimant and approver logins can be done entirely through the mobile or a blend of the mobile and, and web UI, really down to personal preference. Um, the only login that does require the web UI is that final account, account login um, for the sort of final audit of the checks um, of the expenses um, and then pushing that information um, into NetSuite as well. So just to give you a bit of an overview of the uh, of the app. So from the home screen, you get a nice dashboard that just gives you an idea of where your money is at in the process. So this will give you a good view of what you have in open claims, what's waiting with your manager, and if you've got anything waiting to, to be paid, um, that will also be marked within here. Um, we also have sort of claim history, any notifications. So it, it's a real sort of dashboard and, and hub to give you a view. The way that you'll actually use the system from a claimant's perspective is at the beginning of the month or at the beginning of a trip or a set period, you would create a claim header. So I've got a December cash claim here. Um, I've also got a header for um, my corporate card claims. The way these headers work is a little bit like a digital envelope. So what we do within here is we'll add and log expenses as we incur them using the little plus button. Once they're grouped then for the month, we'll submit it as a header. And what that means is for both the approver and the accounts team, you're going to get a nice concise header from a specific individual with all their monthly claims and receipts listed. So it, it just helps to keep on top and keep everything nice and organized. Now, there's a couple of different ways in which you can use the system to add those claim items. The most common is the OCR. So we press the plus button and we use a receipt to, to create a new item. There are alternative ways as well. More and more now people are purchasing things online um, or having things like Uber Taxi where you maybe get um, emailed a receipt. It's really easy. You can just forward those emails straight into your accounts um, or upload them from your gallery and you'll get instant access to um, your receipts within the system as well. So whether it's um, a fuel receipt that you're saving to use later on when you have a mileage claim or whether it's a corporate card receipt that's waiting, um, you can store as many receipts as you need within the system to not take up space on your phone and also make sure that you don't have to keep hold of those paper receipts um, any longer than necessary. So in terms of a day-to-day -day basis, if you've just been out, you've purchased a coffee, uh, you've got a hotel um, receipt, anything along those lines, we come and we use the plus option. We add a receipt or you can go through the claim item as well. If I just go to receipt, what we would then do is we'll take a picture of our receipt. The system will crop a lot of the background image out the way, as you can see. So then we say we're happy with this. What the system then does is it will actually pull the date, the amount, the description straight off of the receipt um, and it builds the claim item for us. So we've got all the detail we need to add here um, to, to then finish this claim. So you could save it at this point that will store it in the receipt section and you can come back to it later on. Um, but ideally what we want to do at this point is, is build that claim while we're on the go. It's just going to take a, a few seconds um, and it means we never have to worry about this item again. So the key bit of detail that we want to choose is the category. Now, a lot of the information in the system will be based off the category selected. So I'm going to select this is a hotel claim. And based on the information that you put in, it will then ask you for um, key bits of detail. So with hotel, it might ask us for number of nights. Um, if we say this is a a train fare it's going to ask us for the from and to destination is it a return journey and that just ensures by the time the claim comes through to you um, you have all the, the key bits of detail that that you need to, to save so that's the, the the category selected we then have a couple of additional options and these can be tailored to the business or you may not need these at all and it just allows you to have um, additional levels of coding set against um, an expense. So whether that needs to be allocated to a specific project, a specific client, um, it just allows you to have that extra level of detail that's then going to post against NetSuite as well. So if I can save this now, I'll save it against the header and that'd be job done. Um, the only other thing I would mention while we're in here is the way that the policy works. So if I change the amount on this and I say this is a £300 claim, because I have a limit set on my category, when I try and save this, 
save this if it's outside the limit what it will actually do is it'll pop up and it will flag um, if it is outside the the exception and it'll let people know that it's over the amount that, that that's expected against that category it'll ask them to go back and put in the description why they they've gone out of that that expected um that expected amount so it just keeps everybody on the same page and it means when it comes through to accounts it's going to flag to you as well the only other type of claim i'll, I'll quickly show is a mileage claim because again it's, it's done a little bit differently where we're not doing it directly from the ocr so you would typically come into the header and choose to add an item and then everything is driven from the category so if i select mileage there's key bits of detail you'll have to populate for every claim that's gone through. So one is the date. You'll have to populate a description. So I'll just put trip for work. And then the way that the system works is it, it drives everything from postcodes. You can put sort of villages and towns in, but obviously it's less accurate. Um, and the HMRC really want those to be postcodes. So as an example, if I just do my drive to work, What the system will do is based on the rate of that um, the individual has been set and the number of miles the system calculates i'll then give them an amount that they're due to be paid back now what's really nice about the way that the system works is if i have had to take a different route because say there's been an accident or if i'm doing multiple stops in a day they can actually tap the map route at destination and what it will do is it will give you a live view of the route that it's actually selected you can tap edit directions and put multiple stops in or you can physically come in and you can actually drag and change the route that you've taken um, to, to reflect the route and it just means that people are then confident they're getting the right amount of miles for the journey that they've done and when i save this when it then goes through to my approver and accounts team it's also going to show them the snapshot of the map that, that they've traveled so if i just select no client and save this item they would continue within that that vein so they'll continue um, adding items when it comes to the end of the month and they're happy with all the pieces they can just tap to submit you can customize a lot of this information so really it's just reinforcing it's the, the right type of receipts um, let them know maybe when they need to submit by in order to be paid um, and then they tap tick and it basically takes it out of their tray um, it submits it to their manager for approval um, and they'll be notified as and when it's been approved and then approved by by accounts as well so in terms of that approval process that can also be approved by um if that's say a line manager it can also be done on the mobile as well but what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the approval steps on the web ui just so you get a view of what that looks like as well so if i just log in I'll come into my approver. What we'll see is the claim that we've just submitted. Now, the approval process can be customized entirely. I suppose what I'm doing is the sort of out of the box, the way that the system is it generically comes. So it goes from claimant to line manager um, and then through to accounts. That can be um, there can be multiple steps in that process. It can be based on amounts and thresholds. So there are a lot of options um, that you can you can use as it comes through for approval for the manager they'll be able to see the name of the header who submitted it how much it's worth and if this is a green tick it means everything's in policy if it's a red flag it'll let you know immediately what you need to check for so if i come into this item um, it's going to give you a lot of header level information so i mentioned things like making it easier to reclaim vat the system will show you how many miles have been done with this within this header um, what you'll need in fuel receipts for the business to claim that back. It'll give you a breakdown of anybody who's already previously approved it um, and all the timestamps. And then what it will allow you to do is to come into each um, item. It will reinforce the business's policy to you. So I can see that this item is exceeding the category spend limit. I can see the company's policy and I can see the detail that they've applied as well as the receipt as well. So it gives me a really nice overview um of the item the receipt and all of the key detail that i need exactly the same with the mileage you'll be able to see any mileage or receipts that are in here and it'll also show you the the route that's been taken as well so it gives you a nice snapshot the only difference between um the approver 
and the accounts view is that typically we wouldn't give the approver the ability to change this information. So what we'd ask them to do is, are you happy with the policy? Are you happy with the receipts that have been given? If you are, approve it. If not, reject it. If they reject it, and they can either reject a single item or the full claim, um, it doesn't delete it or anything like that. It will just post it back to the user with their note for what they need to do to, to actually get it approved. The accounts view in terms of this piece looks exactly the same, but you'll have the ability to change things like the GL code. Um, you can change both the VAT to a different percent or a specific amount of VAT, um, as well as a, a couple of other the sort of additional coding details as well. It almost just lets you tidy up the claim without having to reject it. So what I'll do is I'm just going to log out and I'm going to log into my accounts user. And I'm just going to show you the process of passing it for payment and then viewing that within NetSuite. So if I just come into my accounts person. So again, a very similar view. These are the, the two headers that I've got to approve. Um, I've already checked these so I can just pass it for payment. So I've marked that as paid. It takes it out of my tray and you continually do that until you're ready to push everything into NetSuite in which we'd use the integrations tab. Um, as we mentioned, the integration is sort of inbuilt within. So all we're going to be looking for is the, oh, let me come back. So this is just looking for all the claims um, that have not yet been transferred to, to NetSuite. So I can see I've only got one item that we've just pushed through. So I'll send that to transfer. And what I'll do is I'll just show you how quick it updates. If I just come into things that are transferring in progress, so you do get a couple of options in here um, and you can select custom date range. You can see that there's not actually anything that's matching it because it's already transferred successfully. So it really is just a few seconds to, to process. And then I've got my item within here that, we, uh, that we've just processed. And what I can do now is because of the direct integration with NetSuite, I can actually just open it up in NetSuite immediately. Um, you can see it's posted it in. Things like the category, um, currencies, the department's class location, all of that is already pre-coded and pre-set up. So it means it's a really smooth, easy process, direct posting in, um, and it just takes a lot of the hassle from, from building reports and exporting away from the expense process. I hope you found that useful uh, and it gives you a bit of an overview of the sort of web expenses process. Um, so I will pass back to Ollie um, unless there's any questions at this point. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Tom. Um, well, I'll, I'll pass over to you, Ryan, actually, and see if we've got any questions uh, in the Q&A. Thanks very much, Tom. Thanks very much, Ollie. Uh, that brings us on to the Q&A segment. Uh, I have had a couple of questions that have come in already. If anyone has any further questions, please submit those now and we'll do our best to cover them off for you. Uh, so the first question we have is, can you have an automatic scheduled submission sort of on a predetermined date with web expenses? Chris, do you want to take that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so are we talking about the submission or the transfer into NetSuite um, through the web expenses system and, and an automated uh, so data be, flat? Yeah, so that will be the actual submission. So what they're after is uh, on a predetermined day, so let's say, for example, it's the 28th of the month that all their expenses get put in. If all their expenses are there, they need to manually go in and press submit. Or will there be an automatic process that on that day everything that's been put in will go through for them? Yeah, so just to confirm, um, everything is done from claimant sort of triggering an action um, mm -hmm. with regards to submission and, and getting things through to the approver. Everything has to be um, done by the claimant. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just because um, A, it puts you know the claimant in control of making sure that they've got um, you know, any outstanding items uh, and things like that included in their claims. Um, but it also just allows for anything that might not be sort of fully completed with, you know, associated classifications or descriptions or categories. And it just means that, that everything is complete before it's submitted. But 
um, yeah, in terms of submission, everything is everything is done through a sort of claimant triggered action. No, that's brilliant. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us how quick the implementation process is for web expenses? Yeah, I think um, I think what we say with with um, clients as they're looking to put the system is it, it very much depends on the pace that you'd like to move at um, and the time that you would like to, to test and, and focus on that piece. So I'd say as a ballpark, we'd see the majority of the projects moving through between sort of two and four weeks. Um, but again, if you'd like an extra week to test or you'd like to be live for a certain day, be that quicker or, or further away, we're always very happy to, to work to your time scales. Um, but certainly two, two to four weeks should give you a really good idea in terms of a ballpark figure. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question from the audience. Uh, what global travel slash hotel booking engines does this product integrate readily with? We've actually got a number of um, travel providers that we currently um, work with. Um, to, to name a few that we've previously worked with would be the likes of Click Travel and Travel Perk. Um, so there's a number of different ways that we can integrate with with those systems to to enable the the, the travel and the particular items to be to be pulled into web expenses. Fantastic. If you have any follow-up questions, please let us know. If you need a full list as well, we can arrange this. Just let me know in the chat. Uh, what sets web expenses aside from any other expense providers, such as NetSuite's own expense management platform? I'm happy to take that one initially, and if you want to expand upon it after me, Tom. Um, I would say that the first point, and probably the most obvious, would be the fact that we are a, a specialised expense management system. So um we specialize in that area it's not a, an add-on or a, a particular module which ultimately provides more functionality um so yeah i'd say that's probably the probably one of the, the key elements that we'll take against the, the netsuite's own expense management system um another one being actually not just being restricted to um submitting expense reports um i believe um it is just the expense reports you can submit and also we haven't touched upon it much in the in the slides but also our corporate card integration so we have integrations with mastercard and visa uh, through an sftp so that credit card reconciliation is again something that's quite a nice um, usp against the uh, the net suite adding Yeah. I would I would just I would just add on to that piece as well with the, the corporate card is probably a really key piece. Um, we see a lot of businesses that sometimes they're married managed in different areas of the business and they're not always seen as um, directly alongside expenses. The way that the, the corporate card works in the system is as soon as you spend on your Visa MasterCard, it actually creates an item automatically within web expenses. Um, all you have to do is take a picture of your receipt. And the system will automatically reconcile the right receipts against the right items. Um, and what it means is that all your credit card spend is then rec uh, is reconciled before the statement even comes through to you um, from the bank. And it also means all the items are correctly coded and checked against policy as well. So it's probably one of the easiest ways to use the system and it brings everything all under one roof um, to, to be managed and reviewed. Fantastic. I think there's a follow up to that saying, can you actually show the integration in action? Is that for the for the corporate card piece? Uh, I had to ask the person to clarify. <laughs> uh, yes, what I, can... probably, I think that probably links to the, the claim that we push through into NetSuite, um, which we we touched upon how it then appears in NetSuite. I can show you the the claim and how that looks in in NetSuite. This is the the screen of it posted into actually into NetSuite. Um, so hopefully that that gives you a, a bit of an overview if that was the area that that you were looking for. We can almost uh, always go into more detail as well after the demonstration if if you do want to get in touch and discuss it in more detail. 
Uh, just like some confirmation, that is exactly what they're after. So thank you for that. Perfect, no problem. Uh, the next question is, can the system manage complex education slash subsistence allowances for employees and dependents? I would say that we would probably need more clarification before I say yes, absolutely. Um, but there, there are a lot of ways that we can manage things like allowances and per diems um, and, and set rates for different categories. Um, and, and broadly, we find them to be incredibly flexible with the category list. Another thing that sets us apart from a lot of other providers is that we don't actually lock you down to a category list. Um, you can create and customize the categories to have as many and as wide a ranging as you need. Um, so I, I'm, I'm sure that we would be able to accommodate the, the different types of claims that you've got in, in some shape or in some manner. Yeah, and, and just, just, do just reach out to us. Uh, sorry, was, were you going to add something to that? Yeah, I was, I was just going to add that, you know, on top of, um, you know, per diems and, and daily rates, when it comes to dependence and things, we also have sort of benefit in kind tracking and things like that. Um, so even sort of complex things that go towards sort of benefits claim from the companies can be tracked through the system as well. Right. Uh, can you send an expense report to NetSuite as a vendor bill or journal entry? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, can. Um, yeah, did you want me to take this one, Ollie, on the sort of vendor bill and journal entry side? So, um, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that can be, I think, as as Ollie alluded to um, earlier, I know it's sort of traditionally when you create um, an employee expense within NetSuite, it's it's done sort of exclusively through the expense report. Um, but yeah, absolutely, we find that a lot of people that use the system want sort of configurable transfers. So you know whether they want to use vendor bills um, to sort of create a new bill against a an employee or a supplier in NetSuite. Um, Alternatively, they might want to use a journal entry that has sort of a predefined um, credit line. Um, it could even be that they want some, you know, sort of a, a, a split between, you know, the two so that personal and out of pocket expenses go through as, as a vendor bill, for example, and, and corporate card expenses go through as, as a journal entry. So, yeah, we absolutely support uh, expense report, vendor bill and journal entries. Um, and for corporate card expenditure as well, we do um, vendor bills and, and, and journal entries, and they can be sort of fully customized, um, you know, to default vendors or, um, you know, default sort of credit and debit lines, things like that. So, yeah, really, really custom in the system. Brilliant. Thanks so much for the clarification. Uh, next question is, do you have the ability to integrate with corporate card spend from MasterCard or Visa? Yes, absolutely. We kind of touched upon it. Um across myself and Tom, uh, but MasterCard and Visa, we do, we have an SFTP connection, which allows the the reports to come across to web expenses directly without the customer having to, to, to get it themselves. Fantastic. Uh, into the final two questions, if anyone does have any further, do just send them in via the chat provided. So other than NetSuite, what other ERPs have you integrated with? I think that the nature of the system um, and the nature of expenses is that for us to be used um, across so many industries and so many clients, um, we, we have to be incredibly flexible in how we can integrate with, with different systems. So um, we, we do have a number of direct integrations and partnerships with, with, with key providers both in the UK and with our, our other offices and regions as well. Um, but we also have um, various other ways to integrate with, with a wide range of systems. We'll often see that providers will stick with expense providers through um, various um, finance solutions as, as they grow and change. So we have to make sure that we're, we're sort of flexible and able to, to meet the, the new systems that, that they may move to. Uh, finally, can the system integrate with flight slash hotel booking engines such as Skyscanner, Booking.com and Hotels.com? I'm happy to I think, take that one. Uh, I, I was just, yeah, you, you go early. No, I was just going to say you'll probably be able to expand more upon how exactly that works. So as far as direct integrations with those particular platforms, um, we don't have one. Um, but there are a number of ways in which I, you kind of touched upon yourself, Tom, when we were looking at the system uh, of ways to get those receipts into the system. 
Yeah, yeah. There's a number of ways. I guess the key the key part is um, what you want to achieve with the integration. Um, what we have is the ability to have items created um, and, and, and pieces created within the item when you do have an expenditure um, with, with certain systems. Um, but in terms of getting things like receipts in, um, that that can all be managed as well. So we have, we have a lot of options to um, both have item creation and re, re receipt importing. So. Um, yeah, absolutely. If there's a specific example that you want us to discuss after, we'd be more than happy to to look at the process um, and give you some more detailed um, information. Brilliant. I think that wraps up the Q and A then. So you can take us on to the final slide, please. Thanks very much for taking the time to join our webinar today. If you do want any additional information or would like to provide feedback, please reach out to me at ryan.harris at noblue.co.uk. This webinar will also be uploaded to our YouTube channel over the next couple of days. So if you'd like to review some of the slides which were presented today. So thanks again for taking the time to view today's webinar. I look forward to speaking with you all again soon. Our next webinar is on Tuesday next week at 2 p.m. This will focus on NetSuite Suite Commerce offering. Uh, we'll be sending out invitations soon. Uh, hope you all have a great rest of the day and please reach out if there's anything else you need from me. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.